Good morning and welcome to the video for fifth grade for Wednesday, May the 6th. This is going to be working on our lesson working with quadrilaterals. So to start with, um, I'm going to refer back to this little cheat sheet that I wrote down here. So everything that we're going to be working with for the homework is technically a quadrilateral. So as you see, I've already written a cue uh, down next to our first uh, five problems that we can answer. Um, and then we can use this to help us. So if we have at least um, one matching uh, or one pair of parallel lines, then we would end up having a trapezoid. So for all five of these shapes, we could say that those count as being a trapezoid. So we'll go ahead and add that in real quick. And then if we have um, two pairs of parallel lines, then we have a parallelogram. So this one is going to give us a parallelogram. This one is going to give us a parallelogram. This one is um, going to give us a parallelogram. And the last two are not, because I only have one pair of uh, parallel sides. And then um, if we have right angles, then we start looking at whether or not we have a rectangle. So uh, for this one, we would have a rectangle. Um, and I think I'm just going to abbreviate that as RT. Um, that is our only one of those. Uh, we do have a rhombus here, and we have a rhombus here. So I was abbreviating that as RH. Let's see, trapezoid, parallelogram. Actually, technically, this one also could be a rhombus because uh, we were saying that it's based on having um, two pairs of parallel sides. Um, but I normally think of a rhombus as this kind of deal where we don't have a right angle. So now for number seven, which I like these problems. Um, but I also dislike these problems because depending on how you read this question, there are two completely different answers. So if you take it in the most literal sense, can you draw a trapezoid that has three right angles? Well, let's use number six as an example. So I have two right angles right now. I have a trapezoid. If I were to come up here and then make a right angle here, I would have to have this line extend out this way. Um, if I continue to the point where I can make four right angles, then I don't actually have three right angles. I'm making a trapezoid that has four right angles. So um, if you did that, then we would have a rectangular uh, trapezoid and a quadrilateral. Um, so in a sense, we could um, say that that would work. That's actually the book answer. I disagree with the book answer because in that case, what we end up with is a proper rectangle, and that has four right angles, not three. So um, I would accept both answers as long as you can explain why you answered that. So I would say in a, mo in a literal sense, no, you cannot, because the only way that you could have three right angles is to make a shape that would have four. And at that point, you no longer have three right angles, you have four. Um, so number eight, um, if a figure is a square, then it is a regular quadrilateral. Is this true or false? It is true because a square is going to have uh, four matching angles and four sides that are all the same length, okay? So um, if I drew a little kind of a thing for an angle or whatever to represent that, actually I want to take it away. Um, so four angles and four matching sides uh, for that. So that would make this true. Um, number nine, all rectangles are parallelograms. Are all parallelograms rectangles? Well, no, because we can go back up here and see two different um, parallelograms. We have two matching pairs of parallel sides, but 
we don't have 90 degree angles. So that eliminates that from being a rectangle. Uh, number one on the back. So I went ahead and did this. So a trapezoid, if we look back over here, um, we considered a rhombus being a trapezoid. We consider a rectangle also to be a trapezoid. The only requirement for a trapezoid is that it has to have at least one pair of parallel sides. Sometimes it will have exactly one pair. Sometimes it will have two pairs. Um, and then for number two, a rhombus sometimes has four congruent angles. So the example that we have here looks like um, these two angles would be much shorter and then these two angles would be larger and that matches this. Um, but before, if we go back into our lesson and I gave this as a hint, I um, drew in, we have something that's close enough that we could probably say that those are um, all um, congruent angles. Uh, so let's see, and if we were talking about a square also counting as a rhombus, that definitely has four uh, congruent angles. Um, so number three, how many kilograms are equal to 5,000 grams? That would be five. Um, so our triangle, we have three different measurements for the sides, and we have a 90 degree angle. That means we would be a scalene right triangle. Uh, number five, we are, here's my division problem. We are going to have a remainder of five. So that means we are going to need an extra carton to ship the five remaining books that are not going to fit in another container. And so that means we would have 26 uh, cartons that we would need to use to ship all of the books. The last one would only hold five books. Uh, number six, the number of vertices for a shape matches the number of sides that the shape has and the number of angles. And so a heptagon would have seven. So hope that help ex helps explain for the uh, homework problems. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in Google Classroom. And if you're uh, someone who's finding my videos from uh, outside of Risen Christ, um, please feel free to reach out to your um, homeroom or um, subject teacher for math especially to argue about the merits of what I said for, uh, I believe it was number seven. So that one where um, I would argue in a literal sense that you can't exactly have three and only three uh, right angles. So um, if you are turning in an answer based on that, be sure you explain uh, <laughs> very clearly um, and make sure that they're okay with that. But that's the way that I look at things. I'm, I'm a very um, literal person when it comes to questions. I want the question to mean exactly what it says and not just kind of like, oh, you could maybe interpret it to be that way. So that's the way that I kind of roll. So uh, I don't want anybody to get in trouble because they put that down because I said so and they didn't explain it properly. If you explain it properly, I'm sure your teacher will understand it and uh, will probably give you credit for that. So um, uh, there will be a new lesson video on Thursday. So I uh, hope you have a great day and I will see you tomorrow.